Hi, good day, everybody. Welcome to the symposium. And uh, thank you for, for joining me today to uh, re review my presentation. Uh, my name is Adam Gold. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Chalk, uh, Children's Health of Orange County. I basically oversee the technology environment here at Chalk. Uh, I work with uh, key partners in applications, integration, as well as security to uh, keep our infrastructure running. Uh, my team is responsible for uh, basically all of the technology in the hospital, which includes mobile devices, desktop devices, all the way through um, over to the cloud infrastructure and all infrastructure in between. So what I'll be talking about today is uh, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of Chalk and what we do. Um, I'll talk about the impact on pediatric care in terms of COVID, uh, something I'm sure a lot of you are, have experienced or are experiencing. Um, then I'll cover how we responded to the pandemic specifically. I'll talk about our technology solutions that we've recently implemented, some reference architecture, and then uh, at the end, some of the benefits of partnering with the AWS team. So a little bit about Chalk. Um, our mission is really to make sure we're nurturing, advancing, and, and protecting the health of children in Orange County, as well as the surrounding counties, and ultimately around the world. Um, and our vision really is, is, is to be the best, uh, to be the leading destination uh, for pediatric care. I've been here a little over three years now. Uh, prior to coming over to Chalk, I was the CTO for the University of Irvine, California in San Diego. But uh, it has really been a pleasure over the last few years working with the kids, as well as the providers at Chalk. Truly a pleasure. A little bit about us. Uh, we're a total of two hospitals. Uh, our main hospital is about 330, 334 beds. Uh, we also have a, what we call a hospital within a hospital in Mission Viejo. Uh, we have a floor over there at, at Chalk Mission. We do have five centers of excellence, everything from heart care, or orthopedic, neuro, oncology, as well as research. And of course, we've won our fair share of accolades. I'm only gonna to touch on this briefly. This is a breakdown of really our, our scale, our number of providers and associates. As you can see, we're a fairly large organization and uh, over the past few years especially, we've been growing immensely. So how did the pandemic impact us at Chalk? Well, as you can imagine um, with other hospitals, uh, we were definitely impacted early on in terms of PPE tracking, um, a way to scan our patients, our visitors, as well as our associates in terms of their, their health condition. Uh, for those of you who have you know, gone anywhere, I'm sure you've experienced temperature tanking and other types of questions related to COVID. So we had to quickly and rapidly put a plan in place to be able to handle that. Uh, we also had to work on some of our visitation rules and, and requirements around the pandemic. Uh, normally, we would allow multiple people, as an example, to visit a patient. We had to cut that down and put some very strict rules in place to make sure we were keeping everybody safe. We rapidly stood up a command center, which was a multidisciplinary command center, uh, controlling all of the efforts around COVID, everything from administrative to nursing to the providers and uh, basically the hospital operations. That command center has been open for well over a year now, every day, 24 seven, managing all of the COVID operations. We're also challenged with, uh, during this time, getting the right level of communications out. So how do we target the right folks, get the communications out to the right people, and make sure that everybody's being kept up to date and kept up to speed on what's been going on during the pandemic. Uh, we also had a big shift to uh, offsite uh, work uh, prior to the, the pandemic, Chalk did not have any type of remote workforce program. Only about 3% of our associates were working remotely. So within about two weeks, we had to rapidly define a process uh, to get those folks off site. So I'll talk a little more about that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, limitations and visitation to the bedside and, and just overall hospital occupancy. So let me talk a little bit from a technical perspective um, about our response and uh, where AWS came into play. Um, the first thing that we needed to accomplish was to develop a, a screening platform. 
something that allowed us to quickly and easily scan, whether it be our visitors, our patients, or our uh, providers and associates. So uh, what we did was, was we developed a serverless application uh, running in AWS um, with a little bit of React behind it, but primarily a web-based application that allowed our associates, as well as anybody else visiting or the organization, to simply visit a URL and answer some basic questions. Once those questions were answered, it, the application was able to return them back with a colored screen that basically showed if they were green, meaning okay to pass, which also means they've answered all the questions correctly, red, which means uh, they were not allowed to pass because one of the questions may have thrown up a flag in terms of COVID or COVID infection, or yellow, which would ask them to go speak to a manager or a supervisor or maybe somebody in admissions for some guidance on whether they can pass or not. Leveraging AWS was, in a sense, a blessing. Uh, we were able to spin up our infrastructure, spin up the architecture incredibly quickly as well as make it available to the public and our associates in a very quick manner. Uh, what this helped us do was eliminate a lot of the uh, manual screening that we were doing throughout the hospital and allowed us to dedicate some of those uh, clinical resources, primarily nurses who were doing the screening, to other more important functions. Um, during the development of another project uh, related to COVID, which was our COVID screening scheduling platform, uh, we did spin up some Amazon workspaces uh, for agile vendor access. So basically what that allowed us to do was easily spin up workloads to collaborate with some of the outside developers that we were working with at the time and not have to worry about internal resources, spinning up internal you know, virtuals and things along those lines. Instead, we were able, able to leverage Amazon workspaces to get that done very, very quickly. We also implemented a COVID-19 vaccination scheduling and uh, tracking platform, which was used originally for our associates. Uh, we had to quickly develop a system to be able to track how our associates were being vaccinated, what vaccine they were receiving, what lot number it came from, et cetera. So with the help of some of our internal resources, we were able to stand that up very quickly, which ended up facilitating the vaccination of roughly 5,000 associates. And that application is still being used today. During this time, as I mentioned earlier, we didn't have a remote work program. Uh, we had to quickly stand up a remote work enablement center, uh, which allowed us to provision laptops as well as other devices to folks who are going to begin working off site. This was about a year, a year and a few months ago. Uh, but in about two weeks, we mobilized about 1,600 associates to be working off site. This involved a uh, process of ordering equipment, which was also running in AWS at the time and still is, uh, which is our remote work kit ordering platform, which allows associates to go in once they've been uh, properly designated within our Workday platform. They're able to go into ServiceNow and place an order for equipment. Once that equipment order is placed, they receive a text message as well as follow-up text messages, giving them updates on the status of their order. Once their order is ready, they receive a text message to pick up their gear. They come on site and we literally drive, uh, bring that stuff out to their car and put it in their, uh, their uh, trunk for them. And again, that's all running in AWS and we were to stand that up in about 10 days. Another area uh, that we've been heavily focused on this year is uh, replacing our entire virtual desktop environment um, prior to about six months ago, we were primarily a Citrix shop running Zen desktop as well as uh, using Citrix for our uh, application virtualization through the web. Uh, we made a strategic decision about two years ago to partner with um, AWS in conjunction with VMware to work on a new strategy. So over the last two years, we've been working on developing that new virtual desktop environment which is going to provide a lot of benefits to our clinicians at the end of the day. Um, increased speeds logging in, ease of logging in, the ability to provide roaming for their clinical sessions, which means as they're going from patient to patient and room to room, they no longer have to relaunch all of their applications back to where they were. Instead, that session follows them, 
which is a huge win and a huge time saver. Unfortunately, I don't have any metrics just yet because we just started, but hopefully in the future, I'd be able to share that at another time. Um, as I mentioned, our entire VMC environment, which is our virtual desktop environment, runs in AWS in a 50-50 split, meaning we have infrastructure uh, residing on site, running half of our virtual desktop environment, and then we have another half running in AWS at any given time. We have a total of about 400 workstations running at any given time, which, which is really 400 clinical sessions that, that are being accessed from throughout the hospital or any clinics. One of the biggest things I want to make sure I point on is, is that roaming capability. Um, being able to provide our providers, meaning our caregivers, with the ability to roam and maintain their sessions has really added a lot of value to their, uh, to their um, workday and given them a lot of time back. A little bit more about our virtual desktop environment. Um, we were able to leverage uh, true SSO, leveraging VMware's VIDM platform. So all of our applications uh, use the VIDM infrastructure for authentication. We we're able to reduce our login times from a minute to about 15 seconds. Uh, which is about 55 hours uh, return back to the end user. Um, cloud file storage, we're using OneDrive right now since we are an N365 environment. All of our VDI instances, obviously, were deployed on Windows 10 with the full version of Office. So all in all, when you take all of that and bring it together, it really provided a great environment for the clinicians to work out of. Without getting too technical, this is just an overview of our infrastructure and our environment. Um, kind of shows how we decided to lay things out, uh, which regions we're using within the AWS environment, as well as uh, our on-prem uh, data center. Another big effort we had over this past year, closer to two years, was uplifting our existing um, backup and business continuity environment. Uh, coming over to Chalk about three years ago, one of the first things that really popped out to me was we were using a lot of different applications and a lot of different methods for backups and BC business continuity. So my goal was to really standardize on a single platform and then develop a strategy to make sure from a business continuity perspective, we have the right controls and the right processes in place to protect that data. So uh, we did move off of our uh, existing platform at the time, which was Veeam. We also had two other ancillary smaller applications but we made the decision to move off of Veeam uh, over to the Rubrik platform. Uh, originally, we were positioned to move into the Azure environment at that time, but have recently made a migration of all of that data into AWS. And the reason for that is, is that AWS gave us a little more flexibility in how we were managing that data, and we had a little more flexibility when it came to tearing out the data, which ended up benefiting us from a cost perspective operationally. We're also able to eliminate tape storage as well as our archive uh, storage, which ended up being a big savings for us operationally. So those dollars that are being saved operationally, I could better spend uh, in the cloud uh, within the AWS environment. And we also have full high availability in AWS as well. We've been really happy with the platform. Uh, Rubrik has been a great partner along with AWS again. And it, it's ended up being, uh, from my perspective as well as my team's perspective, a much easier environment to manage. Our most recent project that we're currently working on right now is our disaster recovery project. Um, Chalk historically um, has had a disaster recovery program, but I would say it hasn't been as robust as it should be. So our main focus this year is to really build out our infrastructure environment, leveraging Cloud Endure, uh, which is actually owned by AWS. Uh, as of today, we have roughly 300 plus VMs uh, deployed within the Cloud Endure environment, which means we have 300 virtual machines as well as physical machines that are actively being backed up uh, every 10 minutes or so. Uh, in our environment, giving us the ability to do uh, a restore really anytime we needed back into the AWS environment. Uh, this is going to help us do a few things. One is going to be to eliminate our offsite data center that we're currently using today for disaster recovery and really start to solidify and centralize our disaster recovery environment within AWS across multiple regions. Um, we've had roughly about two weeks of testing so far 
Our restore times have been sub 10 minute restore times directly into AWS. Uh, compared to what we used to have, we roughly have two hours to three hours restore time on a lot of our applications, leveraging old backup infrastructure along with uh, old applications along with that. Today, with Rubrik as our backup in DC and Cloud Endure as our disaster recovery prog uh, program, we're very well positioned in the future to expand out and deliver a very robust disaster recovery environment. Again, without getting too technical, this is an overview of how our, our environment is structured today uh, within Cloud and Cloud Endure. What you can see here is we have uh, systems on the left-hand side within our data center. We have systems landing in AWS Cloud in multiple tiers and multiple buckets uh, for those replications. Um, any, at any time, uh, I can say that the majority of our production systems, especially tier one through tier two applications are covered. Uh, this year, I'm hoping to finish the deployment. Uh, when I say this year, I say, I mean this fiscal year, ending in July, we hope to finish the deployment, wrap up our documentation, and uh, actually go live right around July 1st of this year. Uh, my last slide is really to talk just a little bit about uh, how we're forward thinking. And what I mean by that is, is some of the hot topics that are on our plate today uh, that will likely move forward over the next couple of years. Uh, obviously, we'll be seeing a lot of more continued growth in the AWS. Uh, AWS really has become our de facto standard for the majority of our cloud projects and um, cloud offerings uh, out to our customers. Um, robotic uh, automation is probably going to be something that is going to kick off quite a bit over these next couple of years. Uh, we're seeing more and more of a demand for automation within uh, healthcare, and we see more and more vendors starting to align themselves with that model. So I'm, I'm sure we'll see a lot of growth there. Uh, we've recently wrapped up our SD-WAN deployment of Velo Cloud, but as we continue to acquire more uh, clinics and uh, do our mergers and acquisitions, I expect that will uh, grow as well. Uh, the experience with Velo Cloud has been great as well. Um, the team has really adopted it, and uh, it, it's added a lot of security and, and restful nights to the team. Uh, chatbots uh, are definitely uh, becoming more and more of an ask from our marketing as well as human resources departments. Uh, this will continue to grow. Uh, Splunk, we recently moved into AWS, and uh, we've been very happy with that migration. Uh, we've been able to offload a lot of our physical hardware and a lot of our capital costs and really convert that into more of an operating model as we grow out in the security field and, and logging arena. Uh, we are working on a project today with a company called Ava to possibly put Alexa into our operating rooms. Uh, this is very early on and it's very early on pilot, but uh, this is a little bit of a partnership between us, Ava, as well as uh, AWX, uh, AWS or Alexa for Health uh, allowing us to put Alexa in the operating rooms or possibly the patient rooms to help retrieve basic data from the internet. internet. This is not necessarily patient data that we'd be receiving, but this would be reference materials from the internet being projected on a large screen for the surgeons and doctors. Which leads us into Alexa at the bedside for our patients. We have been having early on discussions about possibly putting Alexa at the bedside to help with patient entertainment, but also help with patient education. And then lastly, uh, during the pandemic, we were able to deploy uh, virtual bingo, which runs in AWS uh, out to some of our departments so they can have a little more engagement amongst their teams. Virtual bingo was developed in-house by a developer on my team, but built completely within the AWS environment. And I'm happy to say many departments leverage that as some of their uh, remote uh, uh, gatherings during the pandemic. So here's a little blurb for you. Uh, I thought I'd leave just a little comment at the end here. Um, our partnership with AWS um, really was exactly that. Uh, at Chalk, we're always looking for partners to accomplish great things with. And the big difference between a partner and a vendor is that the partner has a vested interest in what you're trying to achieve. And uh, AWS really has showed us that. And uh, I really do look forward to working with the team and sharing more of this great stuff with all of you guys in the future. Thank you very much. And I uh, appreciate you uh, attending and, and watching my video.